Hello there! So, you just started up Kingdom New Lands. I have no idea what to do. Let me help you learn the game. So, over here we have a floating ghost lady. That is the queen. That is the ghost of our past queen. She's here to guide us. But we don't need any guidance. Or do we? So, this little ghost directs you to where the campsite is. So you can get started. Now you won't actually be riding a unicorn when you start the game. That's just how I arrived here. I sent over a boat with some of my guys and I crashed here specifically to tell you how to get good at the game. So first things first, we have a guy selling bows here. You need to hold down the S button or just move with W, A, S and D. Also, pressing S will drop a coin, whereas holding S will allow you to buy a bow. Or, as we go over here, we'll buy someone with a hammer. Now, where's that good for, you might ask? Well, we're gonna need to build stuff. For example, we could build a wall right here. It's gonna cost us some coins. And we've got archers hunting these little rabbits. We'll get to that in a moment. But first off, we're building a wall here. You need a builder for that. And for that you need a hammer. So, now we have a wall. That'll help keep the enemies out. Enemies, you might ask. Well, yes. We're gonna get attacked. Pretty soon. But once we have some walls up, we'll be able to get our people behind it. The guys that will... That have joined me on this venture. To show you guys how to get good at the game. They'll be arriving. There they are. We've brought the army. We've brought some people to help us. You won't be getting any of that on your first playthrough, although I will be showing you in this very video how to get them to join you on the second land. You know, there's five whole lands to discover in this new wide world. And there's quite a lot to it, so let's get started by first getting ourselves some more archers. They are pretty useful. Right, so we're going to be waiting because this is night time now. We're waiting for the enemies to show up. And then... Oh, there they are. So, from this we can conclude that the enemies will be coming from the right. As this is the first island, you'll be starting on the first island after all. There's only one place that enemies can attack from on this island. And we have just concluded that that is the right side. So, we only have to build towers on the right side. You build towers by selecting those rocks. So our little builder guy is coming over here now and we'll be building a tower over here. And we'll build another wall over there as well. Next up, you'll need people. Because you know, we need people to stand in the towers to guard the walls. For that, you can go to these campsites and recruit these homeless people. You need to drop them one coin by tapping S or the down key. And they will then become peasants. Peasants will wander over to your campsite over here. And they will pick up tools like, for example, bows. Now, next up, we've got this guy over here. He's dropping his money. This is the merchant. He's available on the first, second and third island. And he is a good way of getting extra income in the game. Let's upgrade our camp more, shall we? There we go, it is now a proper camp. It's very helpful. So, we have our camp over here. It is very important to not get rid of that camp early on. How could you get rid of a camp, you say? Well, if we were to hold S and pay this tree one coin... Yes, paying a tree might sound a bit weird, but... It's actually a way of telling your builders to go and cut that tree down. Now in the background here, you can see Kingdom has a foreground, which we are walking on with our arches and such, and has a background. That background is actually important, whether it's just things like this camp, which is in the background, or, you know, just the forest. If we cut this tree down here, that background will slowly go away. If the background goes away, so goes the camp. So if, if we were to cut this one tree down, we would get rid of this camp where we can recruit people. 
so we're not going to cut that tree down yet. Moving further onto the right, here's another little camp, but it's different than the other one. This is where the merchant goes during the day, and that is where he gets those coins for you. So, you know, try not to get rid of that. Now we'll spend some money on our wall here. We'll also upgrade this tower. There we go. We get a couple of coins from our archer hunting the rabbits. We'll talk a bit more about that later. For now, we're going to go over a bit more to the right. Because there is a treasure chest there. They randomly spawn on the islands. They have a higher chance of spawning on, like, island one. You know, to help you out. And you probably won't really see them on island five. What is this? This is a shipwreck. One of the new futures in Kingdom New Lands and essential to winning the game. We'll, uh, we'll get into more detail about the boat later on in this video. Now as we move along, there are some deer and some enemies. So that tells us this is not a place we want to be for now. But yeah, there are deer that spawn in the forest, just like the rabbits. Except the rabbits spawn on open ground. So after getting rid of the forest, and deer will spawn in the forest. You can have your archers shoot deer, they have a couple of hit points, so you'll need like two or three arrows, depending on how lucky you are, and then the deer will drop you three coins, whereas the rabbit will only drop one. Rabbits cannot spawn behind walls, so even though this is technically open, and we had rabbits here before, you actually need an open area big enough, without any walls or buildings, to actually have those rabbits spawn. The only buildings that block out rabbit spawning is a farm and a wall. You can have towers. They won't mess up the spawning of little rabbits. Until then, we get some more coins from our people here. Let's start clearing some forest, shall we? We're gonna quote unquote pay the trees one coin. Because this is essential for expanding your kingdom. Now, because we know that the enemies are attacking from the right, and we are on Island 1, therefore there is only one side they will attack from, the enemies will be coming from the right forever. We don't have to defend our left side. Do take into account, as soon as you get to Island 2, they can attack from both sides, and they will. Right, so we are now cutting down these trees. We're getting some cash from that back. So it's not like paying the trees to get... Harvested is a negative thing. You can actually earn a few coins with it. And we'll just stay here. Because now, like I said, we've cut down the trees. There's no more border here. You can slowly see... Or slowly, that's actually going quite quickly. The trees have gone away. The background is eroding. And we can now build stuff here. That's pretty neat. We've got some water in the ground here. This is where we'll be able to build a farm. But first... We'll need to get rid of more of the background, because we can't build over here right now. So that's fairly simple. We'll just wait for our people to cut down the trees, and then uh, as soon as the background disappears, we'll be able to start building a farm over here. Doesn't take very long, fortunately. Yeah, it'll totally start from the place where it's at the edge to... Oh, there we go, see? We can now start building a farm over here. And farms will block out the spawning of rabbits. So we're not going to be able to hunt any rabbits here, even though there is grass growing. But we'll have a farm up here. And the farm is a good way of earning money throughout the year. You'll still have farmers be able to farm during the winter. Yes, there's now seasons in the game. And they will have varying effects, for example... You won't be able to spawn any rabbits. But yeah, we just built ourselves a farm. That is a structure we can build. What does it do exactly? Well, on level 1, you get like 2 slots for farmers to start a farm. Upgrading it to level 2, however, like we just have, they'll build a little shed. And your farmers will sleep there overnight. A level 1 farm will only be able to have 2 people and they'll have to walk all the way back to over here. All the way back to the fireplace. We can't actually recruit someone yet. Until we expand the camp. So there we go. Now we have a new place over here. We can pay four coins. And we'll get a scythe. That's where you can actually recruit the farmers. 
So, uh, we'll get four sites, shall we? And we'll recruit some more people to be our farmers. There we go. They'll run around for your coins, etc. Now, because I'm riding a magical unicorn and we are a bit low on money, I think it might be a good idea to eat some grass. Eating grass gives you a bit of permanent stamina. And in the case of a unicorn, you can poop out coins. It's pretty useful, right? Now, we have a large open field here, and you can see there are some flowers growing. Those flowers indicate that rabbits can spawn, and like I mentioned earlier, rabbits can be killed by your archers for one coin. Because, you know, just like real life, you kill a bunny, coins come out. Pretty soon, our farmers will be over here, and they'll actually start working on the land, so that's pretty good. You can see that my unicorn is trailing some particles. Those are rose particles, that's only because of the... Uh, because this is the unicorn. Normally, your horse will be trailing some dust, and that will indicate that you have permanent stamina. You can keep running without any negative costs. So here we go. We find ourselves another chest. And here is one of the most important features of Kingdom New Lands. At this signpost, you'll be able to spend two coins. Just like your bull, uh, just like you're buying a, a, a bow. There we go, words. If you buy a map over there, you will be able to unlock something. Ooh, looks like we have found a pier. This is where you need to bring the boat. How do you bring the boat? Well, you'll first have to build it. And it is very expensive. The boat takes a total of 130 coins. However, since we are on the first island, you can get the boat a little bit cheaper. You'll get like a third of the parts already provided, so it only costs like 100 gold. Still not too hard. You'll be able to get some farmers up, you'll be able to get some... Uh, some archers hunting rabbits, so you know, it's not that bad. And especially if you know where the enemy are attacking from, and you only defend that side, you'll have a lot more coins to focus on either hunting or just building more stuff. Right, there we go, we now have our farmers working over here. You can see the soil is a bit thicker on top, right here, where we are standing. Oh, let's try and steer the deer away. There we go. So he will be running back towards our archer now, and our archer will be able to kill it for three coins. But yeah, the soil is a bit thicker here. That will indicate that they are actually working there. Oh, come on, archer. It was right there. But yeah, occasionally your archers will pick up coins. And to ask for those coins, simply walk next to them. You can walk or stand still, running, past them will not let them drop you any coins. Let's send out the merchant. You'll have to keep paying him one coin every day, but he does come back with a lot of cash, so it makes sense. Now we're upgrading our camp again, and someone has appeared. This is the banker. We'll show what he does in a second. So, Mr. Banker, what do you do? Well, if you stop moving, which is, we'll start dropping him some coins. Once you drop him like 10 or 11 coins, he will put them in the keep. He'll keep them safe, and there is a small amount of interest on those coins as well. Up until like 8 coins per day, from what I've read. There we go, we'll create some more coins. You've got to ask yourself how people would live with smelling coins like that. You know, they came out of a unicorn. Must be a bit weird. But aside from that... Coins. It is night time again. We'll see if we can quickly recruit some more people. A good strategy, especially if the camp's close, drop the coins away from the people because they'll be running towards them. It's very nice. And we have ourselves some more farmers. So yeah, very important. A level 2 farm can have 4 farmers. Ooh, and there's something else over here. What is this? You might ask. Well, let's pay six coins and find out. Got some builders going on. Ooh, they're building something. They've built a catapult. So this building is split up in two parts. There's a little workshop. You can buy a catapult. And if you buy it on the right side, 
it will go to the right side of your kingdom to go and help defend against enemies over here. If you buy it on the left side, it'll go to the left. You'll need two builders to man it and make sure that it can fire, but aside from that, everything is fine. Now it is day five and we're doing pretty well. Let's go over to the right, shall we? Because there were more things here that we have not yet adequately explored. We'll need to see the whole map to know what we're up against. So again, we know the boat is over here. Eventually, you'll want to have a wall over here that you can then use to defend your people as they are working on the boat. But what is this? This is a statue. You don't initially start the game with this. You'll be able to unlock it on the first island. Let me quickly press escape because this is a map of everything in the game. You'll start out on the first island surrounded by nothing but clouds. You won't be able to see any of these islands and these these spots on the island will be white. There won't be anything in them yet. This is everything you can unlock in the game. So on island 1 you can see we've unlocked a figure that looks like this. Roughly, if we pay here some coins, you'll see this is an archer statue. It buffs the accuracy of your archers. So they'll be more accurate when firing at the enemies. Moving on, a bit more to the right, is an obelisk. This is perhaps the most important thing in the game to upgrade. Although, unfortunately, we don't have enough money for it yet. So we'll have to come back or hope we can find a treasure chest. Ooh, we've got a meadow over here with some nice horses. Those are better horses than the original, but we'll be going into mounts deeper in a later video. This is just... A good video to let you know, like the beginnings and such, the basics. Right, now we've found another treasure chest. Thankfully they are pretty common. We'll be able to go back to this monolith, or this obelisk. We'll be able to upgrade it for seven coins. And it goes on its own. There we go. It is now made of stone instead of wood. But what does that mean? I'll show you as soon as we get back to camp. We'll check back on this statue later on. I want to see what's at the edge of this map. At the edge of this side of the map. That sound means that enemies have spawned, so it is good to get back home now. You can, like, steer deer. They will flee from your horse. Oh, that is ominous music. We'll get into that one in a minute. First, I'll explain about... Sending these deer to the camp, like I said before, they can be kited. So just running away in front of them. There we go. Trying to send them back to our hunters. So we get some coins. And we walk next to them to get those coins. We'll hire this one person. Trying very hard to not have them steal the coins. But yeah, it's getting late. Everyone's fleeing back inside. We can now upgrade our wall. We could not upgrade the wall before going to that obelisk. That obelisk basically allows you to build stone walls and bigger towers. Which is pretty good. Ooh, there's a red moon in the background. That means that the enemy wave will be a lot trickier to deal with this time. They'll be a lot stronger. This is called a blood moon or a red moon. Happens every five days or when you destroy an enemy portal but that's not really applicable in this video we've got our archers, they'll easily take them all out excellent the catapult does help, it can take on multiple enemies and will then leave a rock lying outside some enemies can pick that rock up and throw it back at you now we're gonna go upgrade our tower to level 3 which again was not possible before building that obelisk or at least upgrading it. We see... Oh, you have some more coins for us. Excellent. And meanwhile, we'll go and eat some grass. We'll send the, mer uh, send the merchant out again. Now, our banker just gave us some coins. Every day, you can withdraw a third of the cash that he has stored. Although, he will never give you more than you can carry. 
So you're never going to waste any cash. Let's go and drop him some more coins. There we go. Let's go check up on our farmers and our archers. They've been hunting for a while. Archers can carry like 10 coins. So uh, let's see if they've got any coins that we might be able to use. There we go. You can see we have four farmers here now. And they're all growing plants. It's all lovely. Eventually they'll get to harvesting. And then they'll drop a bunch of coins and automatically pick them up. There we go. We are rich. It's excellent. I heard that another one just harvested. Although we want to go back and talk to the banker first. There he is. He'll automatically walk towards the coins that you're picking up. Until he's full. Then he runs back to the keep and stores them there again. Now you might have been able to notice, as he is putting coins in, you can see in the doors where I'm standing with the horse right now, the pile of money is growing. There is no there's no limit to how many coins you can store in the keep. Let's quickly upgrade it further to level 5. We now have stone walls. This upgrade is only possible after you've upgraded the obelisk to stone for seven coins, so you know, it's useful that we did it. You'll be able to get a free upgrade of your walls, and you'll get a free guard tower as well. Which is actually bad, because this side doesn't need to be defended. On island one. Again, very careful to stress it out, this only works for the first island. So you know, the first time you start up the game, or when you lose. Let's say for example I am playing on island four, and I lose. You'll get sent back to Island 1, where you can easily build up without too much difficulty. Right, so, over here we now have an upgraded tower. We now have three, uh, two people in it. You can upgrade it further. You'll be able to get a third person in the tower. And that's as far as towers can go, for now at least. We'll, be, we'll go into uh, further unlocks a bit further. Probably in a separate little video. Because this video has probably gone on long enough for now. This is how you basically get started in the game. This is how you... Uh, make sure that you don't die the first two or three days. We'll be back tomorrow with a another video about the basics. So we'll make that part two. Where we'll talk about leaving and next islands and such. But until then... If you've enjoyed this video or found it in any way informative, like if you've learned something, do let me know by leaving a like down below. And let others know in a comment saying like, hey, this was very helpful, I learned a lot. If you want to see more of these tutorials and not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing so you'll get a notification when videos go live. For example, the second part of this beginner's guide. And if you really like my work, perhaps consider supporting me on Patreon. Anyway, until next time, have a good one.